Have you ever noticed how life seems to kick you while you're down? How it's working against your happiness. When things are bad, they get worse. On what was already the worst day of my life, I was kidnapped. Why are you doing this? Uh, you work for Meriwether, don't you? I know who you are. I know who the fuck you are. Let me out! Let me out! Don't be stupid. Of course I won't. Why are you doing this? Oh, why are you doing this? He laughed at my pain. Clearly, these people could not care less about me. They did this for money. For a payday. The man looked at me with lustful eyes. I knew what he was thinking. I just prayed I was wrong. I wasn't. He closed the door behind him and approached me. For the next eight days, I was locked up in the wet, smelly room of that old warehouse building. I was raped countless times by many different men. I could not tell how many there were. I tried not to look at them. Imagine feeling broken, feeling like you were worth nothing. The only thing you get to feel are cold, disgusting hands feeling every part of your body, and you can do nothing about it. You were powerless. You were nothing. I felt like that was really all I deserved to feel. In between these acts, they interrogated me, asked me about stuff I had no clue about. They beat me, tortured me, inflicted me so much pain I was numbed by it. What did I know? They asked me that question over and over. But the truth is, I didn't know anything. So I tried lying to them. I tried telling them that I knew about the hypnosis, the Illuminati, anything. Just seeing if anything would hit a nerve to make them stop. They told me all the pain was going to stop when I told them the truth. But I was. I was telling them all I knew. One thing I did know for sure. I knew they were going to kill me anyway. I knew I had to escape. One day, as one of the men was getting ready to do his regular routine, he started by zipping down his pants. But today, he decided he wanted to try something different. He had grown tired of the same hole. So instead, he grabbed my jaw, opened my mouth, and pushed it towards his old, soggy-smelling cock. I saw my opportunity. I bit down, and a big piece of his cock came off. Blood spurted into my mouth. I spit out the piece, and without thinking, I got up and ran out of the room. When I came out of the room, I just ran. I ran in the first direction I came across. I didn't know where I was. I saw an exit sign and ran for it. Suddenly, I hear voices behind me. I had to hide, so I jumped behind a big box. I waited. I waited quietly while, shh, he was standing right next to me. I held my breath as he was looking around. I could hear his breath. His mouth was breathing only an arm's length away from mine. There was only wooden box separating us. One step to the left and he would... She has to be here somewhere. They're going to catch me. They are going to kill me. I was lucky. He went the other way. Finally, life had thrown me some good fortune. I took my chances and walked silently and slowly towards the exit. My freedom was getting closer and closer. I turned around. It must have been the wind, 
or an animal, or they were looking for me. I didn't have any time to think about it. I reached the exit. I opened the exit door. It was night, and we were in the middle of nowhere. I just ran for the forest next to the desert and disappeared into the trees. A few hours later, I arrived at an old man's house. I told him what had happened and pleaded him to borrow his phone. He obliged, and a few minutes later, police arrived. Are you okay? I'm fine. You are safe now. Who did this to you? It was... I don't know. I couldn't tell them about Meriwether. You know that, right? Especially after Andreas said the same thing. People would just put me in the same definition of crazy as they do him. But I got out safe. That's the most important part. But where do I go from here? Every bone in my body tells me to leave this be, move from here and start a new life someplace else. But I couldn't let them win. If I just gave up now, that would make the torture I endured this last week mean nothing. That would mean that the kidnapping and the torture worked for them. That it gave them exactly what they wanted. I can't give them that. All my life I have fought to just survive. To just have an ounce of what resembles happiness. It has all led up to this. This is what I've been fighting for. I'm going to make sure that kidnapping me was the worst mistake of their lives. If anything, this has made me stronger. Much stronger. I have to go see Andreas. He knows something, and I have to find out what. Are you okay? I mean, really. I'm really sorry this happened to you. Yes, I'm fine. So, do you believe me now? Yes, I do. I wish you were crazy. I really do. Yeah, me too. You were telling me the truth. Actually, no. I wasn't. Meriwether didn't make me do this. I did the killings all on my own. That was a moment of really uncomfortable insanity that I never get to take back. But I used that situation, and I used that spotlight, and I shined that spotlight onto Meriwether. And it worked. It got your attention. But I can't investigate this any further. I'm just a person. They are extremely powerful. You know about the chemicals? When I was... you know. They asked me many times whether I knew about something called acetaminophene. I really had no idea what that was, then I googled it, and- Acetaminophen. It's the same thing they use in Tylenol, and they put it into a candy because it relaxes people's muscles. It numbs them. It's a great feeling. It's like a painkiller word, like ibuprofen. When people buy candy for themselves, and their children, they're basically buying drugs. Millions of people suffer, and many die from liver failure, all because they don't know. And you're the big hero saving them? Yes, I am. You are delusional. Actually, yeah, that was wrong. We are saving them. And how are we going to do that? Because I'm going to tell you what is happening on the clip that you found in my apartment. 